Climate change is a reality. No country is immune to its impact. However, developing countries are especially vulnerable since their economies depend mainly on agriculture. Rising global temperatures have been accompanied by changes in existing weather patterns in several countries. Many places are facing changes in rainfall and are suffering from severe heat waves, while others are victims of natural disasters such as drought or floods. In developing countries, the great majority of the population lives on small farms. Small farms of less than two hectares are heavily dependent on rain for their cultivation. People's lives and their access to food are strongly affected by a changing climate. Human beings can respond to climate change in two ways, through mitigation and through adaptation. For poor people in developing countries, these responses must be combined with development. Humana People to People works every day to improve the living conditions of the most disadvantaged communities. But it is especially through the Farmers Club program that we deal with the direct impact of climate change among poor farmers and communities in developing countries. Farmers Clubs train small-scale farmers in sustainable agricultural practices. They gain the necessary knowledge to adjust their productive cycles to a changing climate and acquire skills in the fields of nutrition, health, and community development. In addition, farmers clubs organize smallholder producers so that they can take advantage of all the available resources in a sustainable way. Only by doing this will we be able to produce enough food for everybody in the long term. Soil quality is at risk, not only due to climate change, but also due to other human activities. Through farmers clubs, the members learn to use conservation farming practices. These consist of making and using compost to improve the fertility of the soil. In some areas, farmers clubs are also planting trees in their crop fields. This helps keep moisture in the ground and protects crops from wilting and suffering from water loss. Trees also contribute to adding important nutrients to the soil. We are planting trees in the different areas around this Mikulongo Vocational School. So we have planted almost 150,000 starting from last year up to this year we are continuing planting those trees. In this area we have two mountains which we have planted trees and now as you can see this uh, mountain is bare. We need to make this area to be covered with the trees. And the, the, as we have also seen the communities, they are working hand in hand with the school, vocational school, together with the students to work together so that they should maintain the, our natural climate, so that people should have a better place to live. With climate change, amounts and the availability of water have become unpredictable. Some areas will have less water than before, others will have much more, but most will be affected by not knowing when it will come. Water management therefore becomes a critical issue for communities living from their farming. Water management includes irrigation systems which are simple and save water. Here in Mozambique, Cabo Delgado, we are suffering because the climate change, because the water is not easy. It's very difficult to have water. Then the members, they need to have the vegetable production, but they don't know how. That's why we train people, we teach them how to, they can get a lot of water 
so that they can have productive vegetables they are feed this. Farmers clubs promote sustainable water management through the construction of small dams, weirs, and reservoirs to harvest rainwater. Rope and washer pumps, protected wells and water filters, guarantee the family's access to fresh and clean water. One important aspect of an improved life for rural communities is the access to energy. Most rural people live with firewood as the principal source of energy for cooking and even use it for heating. Sometimes kerosene and gas oil are used to run laterns and small generators. In the energy solar project, we provide the light for the people where we have a 40 station. When the, each station has uh, 60 lamps, uh, where the people come in the station, they can uh, pay something to have one lamp. They can use the lamp for two days. Now the children, they can start in the night. Also, we can have a literacy in the night. Solar charging stations, solar panels in community houses, Solar water pumps in gardens and solar dryers have been established in some of the clubs. One of the main projects has focused on the distribution of solar-powered lanterns to help the communities light their lives in a sustainable way. Several farmers clubs have introduced the use of other energy sources such as biogas or biofuel generated through jatropha seed oil. These fuels are less harmful to their health, reduce pollution, and at the same time, the production residues offer a natural fertilizer for the soil. The biogas system, we just save it, it's a, like a pilot project, and then we just save it in Bilibiza where we have one in the training college for the students. We have one in the clinic for the community. In parceria with Centro Saúde and ADPP, we have offered the support of the biodigestor. This biodigestor helped us in the part of the cooking and the sterilization. E nesse momento já pronto não gastar mais gás né para comprar para esterilizar o material usamos esse gás de biodigestor e para cozinha também já não sacrificamos aí comprar lenha para cozinha usamos um pouco biodigestor para a cozinha. When rural and urban dwellers in developing countries cook on an open fire, which is in the majority of cases, firewood or charcoal have been chopped from forests in the neighborhood or more distant fields. 5% of world deforestation is caused by firewood charcoal demand. With improved firewood, saving stoves, the need for firewood is reduced by up to 50%. In this way, the pressure on woodland is also reduced, and as a result of cleaner burning, there is less smoke and fewer chances of respiratory diseases. At all levels of society, the understanding of climate change, of how to mitigate it and how to adapt to it, is essential to take inclusive and solidary action. In all of our projects and activities, be they in the global south or in the north, this major challenge to humanity is addressed with explanation, understanding, and a will to seek the common and concerted action that it takes to face it. Over the last years now, we've been starting up new programs, uh, especially in connection with our vocational school, where we have started up courses in what we call renewable energy. We are teaching the youth there um, both how to maintain solar panels and even go in for bio 
fuel or even how to um, hopefully also use wind energy one day in Malawi. These are our students who are going on our one-year training in renewable energy, that is level one. So here they will learn about how to build a solar cooker. So if they build it and use it for boiling water, we will save some firewood. And we only use firewood when it is cloudy or a windy day where there is no presence of sunlight. And also they learn about how to connect solar PV components like solar panels, solar liquidator that protects battery from being overcharged and also from being over discharged. In our own very close environment, the management of used clothing allows Humana to raise funds to finance development cooperation products in the South. Reusing clothes saves resources for the production of new clothes, minimizes the emission of greenhouse gases, and spares millions of tons of clothes from going into landfills. A single Humana container saves more than 10 tons of carbon dioxide from being released into the atmosphere every year. Besides that, it decreases the environmental impact of agrochemicals involved in the production of cotton and other fibers. At Humana, we believe in acknowledging the challenges and in finding ways of dealing with them by forming a true alliance among people living all around the globe. We share this globe of ours and its climate is a fundamental condition for life.